Chimera is named after a fire-breathing monster in Greek mythology with the head of a lion, the body of a goat and the tail of a serpent. It's defined as a grotesque product of the imagination. A chimera is a hybrid creature that is part human and part animal. The concept of chimeras is, as you can imagine, very contentious in modern society due to the advent of genetic engineering. Chinese scientists at the Shanghai Medical University in 2003 successfully fused human cells with rabbit eggs. The embryos were reportedly the first human-animal chimeras successfully created. In Minnesota in 2004, researchers at the Mayo Clinic created pigs with human blood flowing through their bodies. Scientists feel that the more human-like the animal, the better research model it makes for testing, for drugs or possibly growing spare parts, such as livers, to transplant into humans. Watching how human cells mature and interact in a living creature may also lead to the discoveries of new medical treatments. Widespread research has been conducted on creating these chimeras in recent years and will continue to be a hot topic of debate for some time to come. Troubling questions have been raised. What new subhuman combinations should be produced and for what purpose? At what point would it be considered human? And what rights, if any, should it have? Many contemporary artists have delved into the moral and ethical debate of creating chimeras. Patricia Piccinini is one of Australia's most acclaimed contemporary artists whose sculptures examine the connections between science and nature, art and the environment. Audiences are drawn to her sculptures because they appear so real, yet they are creatures of the artist's imagination, developed to consider a strange new world of artificial or mutant beings derived from experimental biotechnology. Her works are made from silicon, fibreglass and human hair. Often confronting and yet endearingly vulnerable, her sculptures give form to her fascination with the relationship between the natural and artificial, while asserting the power of social relationships, love and communication. Piccinini sees her sculptures as beautiful rather than grotesque, miraculous rather than freakish. Piccinini strongly believes that if we're going to experiment with genetic engineering, then we need to take responsibility for the love, care, nurture of the creatures that we create. Stellark is a Cypriot Australian performance artist whose works focus heavily on extending the capabilities of the human body. His performances often involve robotics. A performance many years ago was one where he used robotics to create a machine that suspended himself in flesh hooks in suspension. You're probably wondering why on earth I'm showing you this artist. But in 2007, Stellark had a cell, cultivated ears, surgically attached to his left arm while he, when he was inspired by an image of a mouse with an ear attached, which is broadcast worldwide. Stellark was not completely satisfied with his newfound appendage, however, and is reportedly planning to um, have another surgery to give the ear more definition. What's more, he's also hoping to implant a microphone inside the ear that he'll use as a Bluetooth transmitter to, you guessed it, broadcast what he hears over the internet. This is the mouse with the ear that he was inspired by. In 1997, this image became very famous and prompted a wave of protest against genetic engineering, which continues today. Marc Chagall is another artist who dealt with chimeras. He was born in 1887 and died in 1985 at the age of 98. He was a Jewish man living in Russia and he wasn't permitted to attend a Russian school and had to go to Jewish schools until his mother bribed a professor when Chagall was 13 to enrol him in a Russian school. He painted mysterious chimeras, half human, half base, composite objects, with human bodies, and fantastic flying animals appear throughout his work in repetition. These recurring hybrid figures feature in Chacal's iconography. The human head is replaced by an animal head. Beasts have human limbs, which they use to play music or to paint while cellos sprout arms and heads and play among themselves. Leela Shield's drawings are disturbing, arresting and surprisingly delicate. Her 2009 drawing, From the Void, is a particularly striking image. What seems to be a human female torso with the head of a wolf has both an arm and bird's wings, flowers and petals issuing from its abdomen in the place of the expected entrails. These creatures are not mere monsters. They have a mystery and a sadness about them, which is strangely touching. 
Claude Jones's work is primarily about the deceitful impressions propagated by those who willfully exploit animals for entertainment and capital gain. Her latest body of works are provocative and aim to expose man's duplicitous treatment of animals. By perversely transporting, transposing animals as both perpetrators and victims in her images, she focuses on man's double standards. The irony is that animals do not drug, cage and torture one another, train others to fight, race, perform tricks or slaughter en masse. Nor do they subscribe to the belief that circus animals take pleasure in performing, that greyhounds and horses enjoy racing and that hunting is a sport. The pursuits of hunt and shoot and fish and sector for whom animals are fair game and the spoils destined as war trophies or even novelty golf clubs covers a pilloried in these works of Jones. Claude Jones employs humour, soft colours and decorative elements that belie a sinister narrative content of the works in the same way that the sordid underbelly of legitimate mistreatment and exploitation of animals for food and entertainment is repressed and sugar-coated.